Hi everybody, Jo here again. Thanks so much for popping in. I hope you've had a having a lovely day or it's evening here, 5 p.m. So I was going to say, I hope you've had a lovely day. Um, but obviously I never know what time you watch me, do I? I know some of you watch on catch up, some of you watch in bed. So whatever time, day or night, just welcome. Now today I thought we'd have a, a good old play at creating a design similar to this. So I'm thinking our Lavinia Challenge is Magical Woodland and there's lots of things you can do for Magical Woodland but I thought I'd just create a design similar to this look. I've got one of our lovely sentiment stickers on the bottom because Rue here is definitely on an adventure. I'll tell you what, I'd love to be able to do that. Mind you, I'd love to look like that. <laughs> So this is the sort of thing, lots of different stamps, creating a lovely woodland theme and it's just such a fun thing to do. And you know what, I just fancied coming in and having some nice crafty time. So we're going to take our time and just create a design similar to this together. Now I'm going to pop that over there and I'm going to start with a piece of multifarious card. So if you want to join in with me, I'm using multifarious and I'm going for a piece out of this um, multi-pack and it's the A5. But again, you can alter if you've got a smaller piece of card, maybe just have less foliage around. You know, don't get hung up about what size of card. You know, you could even make this into a square design. Like I say, less foliage here. You can alter it up a bit. Don't be afraid of using different sizes, different shapes. You know, we just come in with something to sort of wet those crafty juices, get your appetite going, and then you can run with it. Now I'm just going to put my copy of paper underneath, you know what I'm like. And I'm going to start stamping our lovely roux. Now again, if you're not sure where to pop her, use your acetate and that will give you a guide. And I'm going to stamp her in black. So I'm just going to turn mine this way. And I don't want to put my block on top. I used to do that until one day I had some ink on my block and it was straight on my piece of card. So I'm just going to pop it to the side. And I'm going to stamp her in black. So Versafine Claire. Now she's a silhouette and you know what I'm like, I worry about silhouettes which is why I have my copy of paper because it gives me a bit more confidence when I'm stamping. So I'm just going to light taps with my ink pad. Just look in the light, I say in the light, it's very dark here today in Cheshire so if it seems a bit funny the light that's because it's so dark outside. Right, and I'm going to pop a sort of swing in about there. And I'm going to make sure I never take both hands off at the same time. But I'm just going to give different areas a bit of a gentle press. Not too hard. We don't want to almost squash the stamp. But also she's a silhouette and there's a lot of ink on there. So we want that ink to soak into the card. And again, for me, the longer I leave the stamp, almost like it gives that ink time to soak in. If I lift it off straight away, especially with a silhouette, chances are the ink, it, it won't stamp correctly. And these are just things I've learnt over the years. Now, some crafters are fabulous at stamping. I don't know how they do it. They ink up, down, up, and it stamps perfectly. I know I'm not one of those. And I know there's a few things I need to do just to help me. So I'm going to lift that off now and there we go. She's stamped beautifully and we've got so much detail look. So for me, it's worth doing those few little tricks. So I'm just going to pop that stamp over there. And then next, I'm going to come in with at the top, I'm going to do my stamping first, the main bit. And this is a lovely maple leaf. Now, we have got one of our mini stamps, the same as this, but I love this one. This is a larger one, very useful. I'm just going to turn it this way. You know me, sorry, I have to keep turning my work. And for this one, I'm going to come in with the pine cone. I just felt today, I just wanted to get lots of inks out, lots of stamps and have a good old play. Now I'm thinking, let's have this just peeping out from under. There we go. One there. 
just over the top of that. And then we want to make a nice cluster of these. Just got a little bit of my block, so I'll wipe that off. So I'm thinking we want a nice shape, so let's put one there. And then one, just want to, as I say, make a nice shape here. So I'm going for that there. So you see, if I turn it round, what I'm, what I'm aiming for. So sometimes we sort of go for random, but also you can almost have a random nice shape. And I know that's a contradiction, but that's the way my head works. <laughs> and then just to, because I've got that at the top, I want some brown stamping at the base. And I want to use the same stamp. So what I'm going to do, I have choices. I could come up in the middle, but for me, that's almost too symmetrical. So I just think it'll look nice to have one of these in each corner. And it'll just add balance at the base. So, I don't know if you can see the whole design at the same time, but that just balances that lovely. So, I'm going to put the lid on the brown. And then I want to bring in, I love this shape. Obviously, she's hanging. And when I look, I've got a lovely stamp set called the Spanish Moss Foliage. And if you look, that to me is very much that. So I could use either of these. There's two stamps on this set, but I'm going to go for the, the slimmer one. And I'm just going to add some more dangly bits. So again, I want to build up the design and I want it to, it's almost going to tell a story. So this obviously piece, she needs more of those. Oh, Eric sat under my table out and he's just put his leg on my foot. <laughs> Right, so we'll have another one here and I'm just going to go straight through this foliage. I'm just going to put a couple of second generation there and then we'll have another one here and maybe a little bit of second generation there. Now I don't want it to look too symmetrical so we'll have a short one there. And then let's go for one here and lastly I just want one where I've got can you see it annoys me where I've got that there it's sort of hanging to nothing so I'm just going to pop that there so if you look now we've got that lovely it all joins up so we'll give that a bit of a bit of a wipe like we do and put that back and then to add a bit of colour, when I was looking round, I thought I'm going to bring in my winter berries. As you know, I love these stamps. There's two on the set, a large and a small. And then we've got our mini one. But I just think when I look at the design look, a, I was thinking, to be honest, I just want something to colour in. I don't want a lot of the berries, but just something so I can bring that blue in. That was my idea. So I'm going to go back to the black for the stamping. Now, the snag here is I need to look for a space where I can stamp them. So I think that there. And I don't want to overcook this. I want it to look nice. So I'm thinking maybe could we come in there? Just turn it round. Maybe at the top there. Maybe just at this side, the odd one there. And I need something in the middle. Now, if it doesn't fit, I can go and get my palm stamp and actually stamp that. But I'm thinking... Let me just, let me turn it round. I do this. I need something up here. Do you know what? I'm going to go for there and they can just, yeah, just enough poking through there. Now we haven't finished, we're going to add some more stamping, so, but I don't want to add any more. I don't want to overcook that bit. I think it would just look. So I'm just going to leave the top now and look at the bottom. 
and I'm going to bring in I've got this lovely twisted vine set fabulous set this and this one here is so useful and again you can stamp it up or down but what I was thinking is I want to introduce some blue because as I say my theme is to colour my berries in blue so I'm going to come in with the warm breeze and I'm just going to introduce some of this at the base so again I'm just going to turn it this way and I'm going to introduce some first and second generation just to add a little bit of stamping here and just mix it up a bit and maybe just a little bit up the side there and a little bit on the side Just want a second generation there peeping through. Look, can you see? And that needs one there, but I don't want any more first. So I'll just put on my copy of paper. And to be honest, the, the copy of paper does two things for me. It gives me added almost umph when I'm stamping. So that helps. But also, if I need a second generation, maybe just a little bit of third there because that looked too symmetrical to me. So that looks better. I'm happy with that. Give that a bit of a wipe. And, you know, when you're creating something, when you get to this stage, don't worry. It does look, I've got to be honest, a little bit like, oh, where are you going? We've got lots of different colours. Nothing's tying it together, really. Just keep going. Because the thing is, we're going to pull it all together in a minute. And what you'll find is often it's something simple. So for me, I'm going to use this little stamp and would you believe I've just misplaced, oh there it is, I was looking for the piece of acetate and this is mini leaf one. But I'm going to come in with a fabulous shady lady or shady lane and I'm introducing green and I'm almost going to tie the whole thing together. And this little stamp is so important. And often what I would do at this stage is take a picture and look at it on my phone and then take a picture when I've used the green just to show myself the difference. So if we start at the bottom, look. You see, the plan is I'm going to introduce green elements ink around for my um, blending. So if I get a little bit of green stamping, and this is just in the background at the minute, it's not too in your face, but we need it. We need it there. And then I'm going to turn my attention to the top. And just in these spaces, look. And what's lovely is about these pound stamps. They can make a lot of impact. Right, just let me get that flat. That's better. So I'm going to go around the edge. So here, look, where we've got space. And again, using that first and second generation just to fill those gaps. And that's the thing with woodland. You do get foliage peeping through foliage and you get layers of foliage. I have to be careful how I say that. Where I come from in Kendall, we say layers. So <laughs> I'm trying to talk properly, so layers. So I am conscious of... <laughs> these things so I'm just adding a little bit so look where this lovely vine that she's hanging on so we can just add a little bit look so we've got a little bit of the the leaves growing through that obviously I'm not stamping over where I've got my berries that we're going to colour so I'll turn it round now and have a look I don't want to overcook it but I just want that nice amount. So if I show you that, can you see how that green has tied that top and bottom together? But it's not overdone it. We've still got white space. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to leave these edges, I think. Maybe just one more. Right, don't overcook it. Just a little bit there. That's enough. And then a little bit more on this side. Right, definitely stop now. And I'm just going to give that a blot. So I find a nice piece of copy paper, look. Clean piece and just give it a blot. Just because now when I do my lovely and um, blending with my element sink, I don't want to smudge what we've just made. So 
So I need to find over here somewhere. I've got my lovely circle masks and the larger one. And again, for our lovely new followers, I put a little dab of Posca, which is acrylic paint. And when it dries, it's permanent. And it just helps me find this because when I put it down, obviously it's see-through and I do lose things easily. I'm going to turn her round and just place that. She more or less just fits in, look. And I'm going to come in with our elements. So today we're going to start off with Sahara. And my lovely, I'm using the larger of the brushes. I'm just going to hold that in place and start at the bottom. And just gently blend some ink. Always going in the lid and always going on the mask first. And I'm just going to blend it a little bit out. So again, once I've gone off the mask look, I can blend just around. And once I've concentrated on the bottom look, then I'm going to come up to the top here. Same thing. And just take your time. And you'll know your ink pad as to how juicy it is. If it's very juicy, if it's a new ink pad, if you've got some new ones for Christmas, make sure you dab it off a lot in the lid. Mine's a well-used ink pad, so it's not very juicy. So if I take that away, look. So we've got that lovely sort of glow coming away from her. And I'm just going to give that a wipe. Again, it's just important for me that I wipe things before I put them away because I don't want to pick that up next time and it have the elements on, that lovely Sahara, and it contaminate if I'm, say, doing a blue sky. So I will pop that away. Again, try and keep my hands nice and clean. So what we're going to pop around the edges, I've gone for Bermuda. Now, we've got quite a few greens, but I chose Bermuda for this. And I'm just going to get myself, try and get in the habit of not putting my hands on my work. I'm going to start in the bottom corner. And I'm just going to bring in, and I'm almost going to go up to the yellow ink, but not too close. And I'm going to work my way round, just with, again, I'm using my large stencil brush. And again, I think the thing about this is I'm building the colour up. So if I show you, can you see how this is starting to frame it? And the green, you see how the um, green leaves look lovely with the green here now? It blends well. It's starting to pull it together and look like that lovely cohesive design that we want. So that's the good thing about trying to match. Whenever I'm making a design, I always try and match the colours on my Versafine Claire with my elements. And that, to me, is what helps make it look like a more thoughtful, like I say, a more cohesive design. So on this corner, now I know I'm going to colour my berries, but it's important to have the colour around the edge, so it doesn't matter about going over them now, don't worry. The main thing is to blend this colour. I'm going to come a little bit further down at the top. So I've got this lovely green colour behind the foliage, but I've still almost got an area of white. And it'll just make it pop a little bit more. This blending is a good workout. But remember, you're watching this in real time, so you're seeing how long it does take me to actually blend the ink around the edge. And I think for me, and this is just for me personally, I think it's important to be able to realise that for me, I need to blend the ink, then look at it and think, right, I need a little bit more in the corners. You know, it doesn't magically happen. So, you know, it does take time to look and decide just how much ink we want. And for me, and again, I say for me because everybody's different and I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. There are lots of different ways. And to be honest, that's why we have lots of different people on our design team. And that's why there are so many different crafters around, because we all have different ways. 
you know, and certainly this isn't the only way, probably not even the right way. It's just the way I do things. And I just invite you into my head, explain why, and if you like it, you do. If you don't, you don't. I mean, I wouldn't like to be in there. So for me, while I've been talking, I've just built up those four corners and I just think it frames it a bit more. And if you're somebody who's nervous about inking with your stencil brushes, putting the lighter colour first around and then adding extra to the corners is, is a good way to do it. You'll probably find it an easy way to do it, shall I say and one that gets very good results and that's the important thing so i'm just going to give this a bit of a spritz we'll just clean that up like i say mr inky binky won't stay white for long will he well that's fine that's what he's here for i love adding color to him actually I love looking at the patterns, but again, that's probably silly of me. But there we go, these little things. Right, so I'm going to add some colour now to those berries. And I'm going to come in with my watercolour pencils. And I've just, there's two colours of blue here. I'm just going to turn this round. Where's my... And I'm just going to sort of go around the edge with the darker colour. So I'm just going to do them one group at a time and then come in with the, the lighter colour. And again, you know me, I've said this before, there are people who do proper colouring and Mona does amazing and Katerina do the most amazing colouring. I just do a bit of a, a, bit of a cheats colouring. So I'm just using the darker colour around the edge. And even over the element sink, look, it'll be fine. That blue will really pop. Now, where else did we have? Something about berries in blue, I don't know why. Now, I know you're going to tell me that berries at this time are red here in the UK. But this is our magical woodland, so here we've got blue. Mind you, I've seen um, a plant with almost sort of dark purpley ones. Is it um, begins with M? And I did think, oh, well, I like the colour of those berries. And as you notice, I'm just keeping my pencils in my hands. I just find it easier than constantly popping them down on my mat. Right, now to keep that lovely blue thing going, I'm going to add some blue to her wing. So... The intense, the dark colour at the top there, look. And then with the lighter colour, I'm just going to leave a little bit at the end because I can blend that. And here, and here. And then what I'm going to do, she says I've put the lid on, I can't open it. Now these have to go back, I'm a bit funny in the right place. So I've got a, a yellow. So just with the yellow, Going to add a little bit to her hair look. She's got lovely yellow locks. There we go. And then I'm going to do a bit of that Winker colouring. So I've got my Winker Stella pen. So anybody who got one of these for Christmas, they're fabulous. So it's glitter in a pen. Lovely. But what I can do, I'm going to do her first. So I've got watercolour pencils, but instead of using water to blend, I'm using my Wink of Stella. So I've gone over that yellow, so I've got a little bit of yellow on my brush look, so I'm just going to clean it. And then we'll go into the blue. And what it does is it blends my pencils, as I say, the watercolour pencils, but also it adds glitter. And look at that area where I left it white there, I've just blended that blue, but it gives me a light blue. Can you see that? And it's just a lovely thing to do, so... And also... I mean, today, I want to take my time and lovely relax and enjoy this. But if you needed some speedy colouring, it's actually a speedy way to watercolour. But you get the glitter as well. And as the Wink of Stella dries, it will be even more glittery. 
The only thing I will say is do make sure you give the little nib at the end of your brush. Just give it a little white when you've finished because we will have some blue off the watercolour pencils on it. So for instance, look if I show you, so we've got a little bit of blue, but it's only a little bit. It soon goes back to being clear, look. So what we can do, and just to show you how clear it is, we'll add a little bit of clear. She's very magical. And just around the this orb, I think this is the aura. I mean, it could be a moon. You could be spotlighting her. But I just think it's her magical. And then on these lovely long there we go and then i think we just need some little highlights so i'm going to get my white signo pen i also want um Oh no, I was going to add some pastel pencil, but I don't think I will around the moon. I'm gonna that's what I was thinking. I'll let you know that's what I was thinking. But I'm thinking I won't, I'm just gonna use my and even though we've added the wink of Stella, now I've got to be honest, it would be better if it was dry. But I can just add those lovely white. And again, if you don't have one of these, you can use your, your white posca. And just come in and add a little so either so your gel pen but as always just use whatever you have but what you'll find is it's the little whites and they just make all the difference we'll just add one on a a little bit on the top of a hat maybe a little bit on a wing and then with my black fine liner pen now this is my brown one where's oh there's my black one i'm just going to add a couple of little lines look because she's obviously moving that fast as she swings through her magical woodland so i think i've had enough color now what you can do if you want to do some faux bleaching you could add um some water and give some speckles in the background but i'm going to add some posca but i don't want it on our lovely rue so i'm just going to bring the mask back look and pop it there and i'm going to get my yellow as you know i love this yellow glittery sparkly one but if you don't want to add Posca, you could use your fan brush and add some water droplets and it would give a very similar effect. But I just think this, with it being glittery and yellow, it just adds that lovely hint of magic. And again, I'm holding my nib quite close, look. Nice and gentle, don't need to be rough with it. I love these. As I say yesterday, I just bought two new ones. I have to buy them two at a time. Just because if I run out, I need to know I've got another one there ready to use. So carefully lift that up. And there we go, look. Now I can't wait to see what designs you come up with. But you could take this, you could use different stamps, maybe a different fairy. I was going to use animals, as you know, yesterday I said, oh, I'm going to add some animals. And I ended up, sometimes crafting just takes us places like that, doesn't it? So if I bring in the original, so that's the original, and I've put some blue card behind, just matted and layered it. And as I say, I've added one of our lovely, so this is from Sentiment Stickers Set 6. And as you know, we get three colours, the white, the um, vintage, I couldn't think of the word, and the black. So I've gone for the black. And there's the one that we've created today. So I really hope you enter the challenge. As I say, the winner's chosen at random. £40 to spend at Lavinia. I mean, what's not to love about that? All the information is on the website. Just pop to the website. So I hope you've enjoyed that little play today. 
I know it, we've taken it nice and slowly, but I just felt after Christmas, after New Year, we just needed some time to spend together and just craft, to just stamp, add some colour, add some ink and have a lovely, relaxing, enjoyable time. So I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I do love our times together. So whatever you're doing, enjoy the rest of your time. When you go to bed tonight, sleep well, relax. Love and hugs from me. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.